Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless in the last days the prophet zechariah tells us israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against jerusalem zechariah 12 2 and 3 behold i will make jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against judah and jerusalem and it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. Israel putting its forces on high alert after days of taking rocket fire from Lebanon, the Gaza Strip, and for the first time, Syria. As Chris Mitchell reports now from Jerusalem, Israel is fighting on multiple fronts and many experts are pointing at Iran as the source of the escalation. More than 30 rockets were fired from Lebanon into northern Israel and at least six from Syria. After the rocket attacks from the north and south, Israel hit targets inside the Gaza Strip, Lebanon and Syria. Many believe Iran is leading this push from behind the scenes. Just last week, we saw the heads of Hamas, Ismail Haniya, sitting together with uh, the head of Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah, in Beirut, behind pictures of the imams that uh, lead the Islamic Republic, uh, Khamenei and, and Khomeini before that. So there's no doubt that it's Iran that is trying on every single front to attack the state of Israel. Trayman believes Iran is now sensing weakness inside Israel. The Iranians are looking at what's going on in Israel today, and this includes uh, the debate and the protests over judicial reform, the challenges to the current governing coalition, and are recognizing that uh, this might be a prime time to test the strength and resolve of Israelis here in Israel and to stage attacks. In an apparent move toward Iran's meddling, the U.S. Navy is deploying a guided missile submarine capable of carrying up to 154 Tomahawk missiles to the region. It released pictures of the submarine crossing the Suez Canal on Friday. Israel is also reeling from terror attacks inside its border. This ramming attack on the Tel Aviv promenade wounded several and killed this 35-year-old lawyer from Italy. Family and friends mourned two sisters after a Palestinian terrorist murdered them in a shooting attack on Friday in the northern Jordan Valley. Their mother, also shot in the attack, is in serious condition. The flashpoint came last Tuesday night when Muslim men barricaded themselves in the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount. Israel police negotiated with them to leave, but they refused. When the police entered the mosque, the men set off fireworks and threw stones in retaliation. And video spread throughout the Muslim world providing the pretext to attack Israel. The escalating tension here comes as Muslims are celebrating Ramadan on the Temple Mount. Jews observe Passover with the Kohanim blessing at the Western Wall, and Christians gather at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and Garden Tomb to celebrate Christ's resurrection. It's rare to have all these holidays fall at the same time. God gives a dire warning for the nations that come against Jerusalem, as we read in Zechariah 12:3, And it shall happen in that day, that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. Scripture plainly tells us all nations, including America, will be gathered against Jerusalem in the last days. I have often wondered what could possibly cause America to turn on Israel. I believe the answer is now clear. What's happening right now is very striking. This is the first time, really, that Israeli leadership has openly uh, broken with U.S. leadership. The new administration, especially the leading figures like Ben Gvir and Smotrich are simply telling the United States, get lost. Netanyahu has made pretty strong statement saying, we're a sovereign country, we'll do what we want. We don't care what you say. It's the first time the confrontation has been this clear and it's not clear how the United States will respond. For the first time ever, 
two or three years ago, an American, a U.S. representative in the House of Representatives uh, introduced legislation calling for the United States to reconsider U.S. aid in Israel in the light of U.S. law. Well, I think all of these things are moving to the fore, could lead to big changes in the future. It is based to a large extent on substantial shifts in public opinion. Genesis 12, 1 through 3. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God's foreign policy is pretty simple. If you bless Israel, you will be blessed. If you curse Israel, you will be cursed. This morning, tensions rising in the Middle East after a wave of violent attacks across Israel. And now the conflict expanding to a new front, Syria. Israel says six rockets were fired from its northern neighbor. Israel saying it responded with artillery and airstrikes on Syrian military sites. There were no reported casualties, but Syria state media reporting there was damage in their country. The tit-for-tat comes after Israel and Palestinian groups traded airstrikes and rockets over Lebanon and Gaza the past week. So Israel's not interested in escalation right now, not interested in a war with Hamas we, if, if the, if debilitating keeps, them. If it keeps quiet, we'll, we'll stay quiet. I mean, especially in this time, if, if other forces target us or try us, we'll be ready. Muslim world must unite against Israel. Turkey's President Erdogan says to Iran's President Raisi. Iran's President Raisi calls for Islamic convergence against Israeli atrocities. The Turkish President and his Iranian counterpart stress the need for Islamic unity to confront Israeli occupation crimes against Palestinians. As we continue to watch Bible prophecy unfold, it seems as though the War of Gog and Magog is looming on the horizon. Ezekiel 38, 1-9 The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I will turn you about and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you out and all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor, a great host, all of them with buckler and shield, wielding swords. Persia, Cush, and Put are with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer and all his hordes, Beth Garma from the uttermost parts of the north with all his hordes, many peoples are with you. Be ready and keep ready, you and all your hosts that are assembled about you and be a guard for them. After many days you will be mustered. In the latter years you will go against the land that is restored from war, the land whose people were gathered from many peoples upon the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste. Its people were brought out from the peoples and now dwell securely, all of them. You will advance, coming on like a storm. You will be like a cloud covering the land, you and all your hordes, and many peoples with you. These are the modern-day nations listed in Ezekiel 38 and 39 who will be mustered in the latter years to attack Israel, Russia, Iran, Turkey, Libya, Sudan, and Ethiopia. God tells us exactly what will happen to Iran, Russia, Turkey, and the many peoples with you when they attack Israel in Ezekiel 38, 18-23, and 39 to 7 and 8. And it will come to pass at the same time when God comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. The mountains shall be thrown down, the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother, and I will bring him into judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. And I will turn thee back, and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them profane my holy name any more. Then the nation shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel, 
Surely it is coming, and it shall be done, says the Lord God. This is the day of which I have spoken. I've been informed by top-ranking military officials that Israel has been unable to launch even a single plane in defense. As I stand here, fighter planes are exploding in midair. They're crashing and falling to the ground without any explanation. And while no one can seem to give me any reason for why this is happening, I can tell you this. This all-out, unprecedented attempt to destroy Israel appears to be failing. God is the one who fights this battle for Israel. He does it for two reasons. To make his holy name known in the midst of his people Israel, that the nation shall know that he is the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Zechariah 2, 8, and 9. For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoiled for their servants. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Israel is precious to Almighty God, the apple of his eye. He is simply saying, You touch my chosen nation Israel, you poke me in the eye. Is Vladimir Putin the infamous Gog of Magog? that the prophet Ezekiel warned would come on the scene in the last days and lead a coalition of nations to destroy Israel? Or could Gog be Recep Tayyip Erdogan, another dictator who is fast gaining power and dominance in the Middle East? Biblical scholars can't agree if the prophet Ezekiel was talking about a last day's assault on Israel being led by Russia or Turkey. Many popular Bible teachers claim that Gog will come from Russia, while others claim that Ezekiel's prophecy actually points to Turkey. Whether Gog is from Russia or Turkey, both nations are presently being led by undisputed dictators who could each very easily fit the Gog profile. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. A massive show of military might off the coast of Taiwan. China deploying fighter jets and warships Saturday, sending 71 planes into Taiwan's airspace and at least nine Chinese warships now surrounding the self-governed island of Taiwan, simulating a naval blockade. It's the start of exercise joint sword, three days of military action that Beijing says is a serious warning. This is their way of trying to intimidate the exercises in response to days of high-level talks between the U.S. and Taiwan, beginning with President Tsai's meeting with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy in California. Hours later, a congressional delegation arriving here in Taipei for three days of engagements. It is important that all democracies stand together against tyranny and oppression. President Tsai saying Taiwan has faced continued authoritarian expansionism, making cooperation among democracies even more important. Chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Congressman Mike McCall, vowing to deliver weapons and training to Taiwan's military. We will provide training to your military, not for war, but for peace. China's response so far more muted than their actions after then-Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited last summer, when their drills included firing ballistic missiles. But the tensions between the U.S. and China higher now, this military show of force causing concern in the region and beyond. Today, Taiwan pledging to respond with a calm, rational and serious attitude. Meanwhile, China not showing any signs of backing down. Congressman McCall stressed Taiwan needs weapons to deter and, if need be, defend against a Chinese invasion. But with about $19 billion in weapons meant for Taiwan now backlogged, many of those systems won't arrive here for years. And we begin this morning with China's military conducting aerial and naval blockade drills around Taiwan on its last scheduled day of exercises. At least 70 Chinese warplanes and 11 warships were spotted just today. Here's what Taiwan's foreign minister told Fox News about these drills yesterday. If you look at the uh, sorties uh, of the Chinese Air Force, uh, together with the uh, ships uh, that are coming very close to Taiwan, and any accident might spark 
an uncontrollable war in between Taiwan and China. And if other countries are trying to intervene, uh, it might be the start of a uh, war of a grand scale. Gordon Chang is with us this morning. Gordon, great to see you. Thanks so much for weighing in here. Well, thank you, Maria. You know, how would you assess China's response to all of this? First, there was a lot of huff and puff uh, about we're going to come back with a retaliation for Kevin McCarthy's meeting with the president and the House lawmakers actually going to Taiwan, meeting the vice president there. And yet, what did we get? We see these drills around Taiwan. How would you assess this response? These drills resemble those that China conducted after Speaker Pelosi went to Taiwan in August. The, the real issue here, though, is you've got two militaries, the American and the Chinese, operating in close proximity to each other, and anything can happen. You know, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, says that war is not imminent, and I can understand his argument. But when you have uh, China engaging in dangerous intercepts of the U.S. and other militaries in the region, anything can happen. And we have a military that is not prepared to deal with uh, probable scenarios. You know, General right. Mike Minahan, on that January 27th leaked memo, talked about war with China in 2025. Well, you know, it could very well be before then. This is a Chinese military that knows it should not go to war, but it wants, it emotionally wants to go to war. And that yeah. means we're in a situation where anything can happen at any time. A Fox News alert. The United States now challenging Beijing's wave of simulated military strikes around Taiwan by sending its own Navy destroyers into the South China Sea. Rebecca Koffler is a strategic military intelligence analyst and joins us now. Technically, it is legal for the U.S. to send this Navy ship into international waters. But it's obviously going to tick China off. And my biggest question here, is the U.S. in any position to be really getting involved in another conflict when we have so much energy and resources being pushed into Ukraine right now? We must demonstrate to China that we can defend Taiwan, right? But the truth is, as you said, we're stretched pretty thin. Even though we have a doctrine that um, we are supposed to be able to fight a two-front war with two major adversaries. The Pentagon calls them tier one near peer competitors. But the truth is, we can't because we have depleted our military arsenal. Our 155 millimeter ammo is on backlog five years. So it's kind of our ambitions and our ability to prosecute this war are out of sync right now. Signs of devastation are everywhere in Peru as flooding continues due to storms in the country. This man was covered in mud after being rescued from the deadly flood water. <laughs> These people banded together to get a truck out of harm's way while a crowd retrieved a three-wheeler motorcycle that turned upside down while carrying 12 passengers on it. Another person was in tears after losing a relative in the mudslide. <laughs> Since the storms began, houses, schools, and crops have been destroyed. This local sent out a cry for help, asking regional authorities to pay attention to those affected. Earlier this week, there were more thunderstorms in the country than what was projected for the entire month. And meteorologists say rainfall will continue throughout the weekend. As we look at the news, there is no doubt we are in the birth pains Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24, 8. We see many of God's remedial judgments manifesting, as if God is warning us of things to come and calling on people to repent. We see war and rumors of wars, famine and pestilence resulting in the deaths of thousands around the world. We are seeing earthquakes, extreme heat, floods, wildfires, tornadoes, hailstorms and hurricanes, all at record levels of frequency and intensity, just like Jesus said would happen just prior to his return. The judgments God will use to punish mankind with during the seven-year tribulation will be much worse than any of us can imagine. Still, this is God's grace and mercy, proving to everyone that these judgments come from him, and he is still offering forgiveness of sins through his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I implore you to do so today as we are not guaranteed tomorrow.
In these first three months or so of 2023, nearly 500 tornadoes have been reported across 25 states, doubling the average for this time of year. Clustered in the Midwest and the South, the storms gather quickly, leaving residents little time to find shelter and turning homes and businesses into piles of lumber. So why is this tornado season especially bad? And what more can be done to protect against the destruction? They look like scenes straight out of the movie Twister. A dark funnel cloud rolling over a roadway in Iowa. Dude, stop, stop. There's debris coming down A woman in Arkansas nearly sucked out of a building. But these aren't Hollywood movies. They're real life, all part of a devastating tornado season that's already in full swing. And it's only April. We're in the very early portion of severe weather season, and yet it's already been very, very active. Professor Victor Gensini studies the effects of climate change on extreme weather. He says a warming planet has made tornadoes more frequent and more ferocious. Essentially, it's more hot, more humid right at the surface of the earth. And when you have that with thunderstorms, that serves as fuel. Tornado season is now starting much earlier in the year and lasting much longer. These killer storms are also on the move. Tornado Alley, once centered in the Great Plains, is now shifting further east. Why is that? That's basically like a lid on a boiling pot of water, and it's suppressing the thunderstorms from forming. It is happening over an area of Texas and Oklahoma. They end up forming somewhere else, and the somewhere else happens to be in the Mid-South and Midwest primarily. That means deadly tornadoes touching down in towns and cities not prepared or built for such destructive storms. What are some of the dangers of Tornado Alley shifting eastwards? It's a massive increase in vulnerability. We have way more people living east of the Mississippi River. Your population density goes up. Also, especially in the springtime, we'll have less daylight hours, right? So that means more likely that the tornadoes can happen at night in the dark when you're sleeping. I thought I was a goner for sure. Tornadoes have killed at least 68 people already in 2023. Normally, 71 people die in an entire year. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. We begin in Louisville, Kentucky, where at least four people are dead and eight others are injured after police say a gunman opened fire inside a bank there. This all happened in the city's downtown area about 8.30 this morning. The deputy police chief says officers arrived on the scene just minutes later to the sound of gunshots. He says the shooter was also killed inside the bank and that there is no active threat to the community. Within three minutes of being dispatched, Officers arrived on scene and encountered the suspect almost immediately, still firing gun, gunshots. Officers exchanged gunshots with that suspect, and ultimately that suspect did die at the scene. We are trying to confirm if that suspect died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound or was killed by officers at this time. At least two officers were shot during this exchange of, of gunfire. One is currently in surgery at University of Louisville Hospital. At least four more victims were confirmed to be deceased inside the location, as well as eight that are now currently being treated at the University Hospital. Two are critical, one of those being the officer. You've never seen anything like this before. A 12-year-old just arrested for murder is marched shirtless and in cuffs to a waiting car. Then a second suspect gets the same treatment, only he has a shirt on. He's 17. Despite the suspect's ages, the two perp walks were videotaped by the sheriff's department and posted on Facebook. We do not hold our juveniles 
accountable. We minimize their actions. The pair were charged with the slaying of three teens at Ocala National Forest that spread fear outside Orlando that a serial killer was on the loose. Police are also searching for a third suspect, aged 16. One victim, 16-year-old Layla Silvernail, was found shot on the side of the road. The next day, a 17-year-old boy was also found dead half a mile away. Police have not released his name. Then on April 1st, the third victim, 16-year-old Camille Quarles, was found dead in the trunk of a submerged car in a pond at the National Park. It turns out cops say all six young people, victims and suspects, knew each other and were in the car together when the murders took place. At some point, these three individuals turned on our three victims and murdered them. Marion County Sheriff Billy Woods announced the arrest today at a press conference that's causing a lot of controversy. Each and every one of them, in some shape or form, is associated with a gang. That was the craziest, most unhelpful press conference. But Fox News defended him. He spoke out, and I think he spoke for America. They took a life without thought. They deserve the full extent of the law. Can you feel it? Can you sense it? Something is changing in our world. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. One of the many signs that we are living in the last days is that men would be lovers of themselves, as we read in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. Every characteristic listed after men would be lovers of themselves illustrates what men do when they love themselves above God. When you jump down to verse 13, the Bible states, But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. It is very evident that evil is getting worse and deception is off the charts. Godlessness is now taking over all aspects of society. As Christ followers, what are we to do as we see the world growing darker? We are to walk in love, light, and wisdom, as we read in Ephesians 5, 1 through 21. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also has loved us, and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you, as is fitting for saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an adulterer, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, Awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God.
The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised Him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.